In today's video, I'm going to show you how I'm powering my entire house using a battery backup system. Now, this is an all-in-one unit, but it's capable of providing 240 volts of electricity. That's a big deal because that's finally comparable to your typical gas generator. And that means it should be able to run all of your appliances, and that includes things like electric dryers, well pumps, or other large items like your electric stove. The added benefit to this hookup is its flexibility. I already own a gas generator, but I wanted to be able to use both this battery and my gas generator whenever I needed it. So here I installed this special switch. This is a 30 amp switch that allows me to alternate between two different generator inlets. You'll normally just see one of these inlets installed on the outside of your house because you've got to run your gas generator outdoors. Now here's what I'm using for my battery setup. I'm using two EcoFlow Delta Pros along with one expansion battery apiece. This should give me about 16,000 watts of runtime, and I can run almost 8,000 watts of power loads. This is just a standard Reliance 30 amp generator plug. This is the same kind you'd use for your gasoline generator. Now I'm gonna use this regular generator cord to plug right into the inlet, and then the other end goes into this special device called a hub. This is what connects two EcoFlow Delta Pros together. Now a lot of you might be curious about this switch box, and it's pretty simple the way it works. This is called a three pole double throw switch. Three pole means that I'm actually switching three different wires. There are two hots and my neutral wire. The center position is actually the connection to my electric panel. That goes up through this wire and then it connects into the interlock breaker. It's got a lever on the side and when I move it, I break the connection to this inlet and now I'm basically in the off position. And this really is nothing more than like a Frankenstein switch. I press in the safety and now I'm switched to my outside inlet. So this really gives me a lot of flexibility of having these two plugs anytime I want to use them so I can use a battery system indoors or I can connect my gas generator outdoors. Now let's give these things a real test and see if it actually works. This will give me some light while the power is out. That's my interlock. This is my generator and I can't switch it on until this plate gets out of the way. This is just a mechanical kind of interference plate when I throw my main, we'll see what happens. So now the house has no electricity. So this would be exactly what would happen during a power outage. That beeping is just my UPS. So my EcoFlows are on. I've got my switch set to the inlet position. You want to make sure all your connections are good. Now you can see with the main over, I can slide that plate up. And that means my interlock breaker is now on. But of course I can't put my main power back on until this goes off. That's the interlock portion. You either get to pick one or the other. The EcoFlows are on, but we've got to turn the 240 volt adapter on. And that's done by pushing this button. Well, power's back on. And let's see what's going on here. You can hear the fans, I think of these running. So normally you'd be running this on your iPhone. So here's what we have going. You're interested in the output, 853 watts on one device. And if we look at our other, 450. Now I'm hoping in the future they're able to combine one um, sort of combo view of the 240 view, but at the moment you have to go in and check each one. Now from an electrical perspective, this was very easy. You don't have to have that switch if you've only got one inlet, if you're going to just mount it indoors. So the big question is, how long can I keep running? This is going to vary. Anything you can shut off during a power outage is, of course, going to extend the amount of runtime you get. All right, first thing I want to try is the microwave. That's empty, so I don't want to run it for more than a couple seconds, but that seems okay. Lights are easy. Try a garage door opener. That's working fine. Here's my heating system. Now this one is a pretty high efficiency propane system, but remember most heating systems don't use electricity for the fuel. They use electricity to run motors and pumps, but that's a far less electrical demand than the heating part itself. Now, I've also got two refrigerators in this house. This is an older one. You can already hear the compressors running just fine. This is the newer, more modern one, and this is still running as well. This dryer is going to be a big deal to test. I don't know if they're going to be able to run it, because remember, I've got two fridges running, a bunch of lights, all the little plugged-in crap in your house that runs. See if we can run it. There we go. Mm. 
Wow, I'm actually impressed. Yeah, you can see that 3,600 watts on one and 2,900. Now remember, this is not just my dryer running. The whole house is running plus my electric dryer. And when you test a well, you've got to let the water run for a little bit so that your pump kicks on. Normally when the pump kicks on when I'm on battery or generator, I will see the lights dim a little bit. So we'll see if that happens. I'm not really seeing uh, any kind of dimming. So it's safe to say that the pump is working just fine. Now I'm back downstairs. These things still seem to be uh, buzzing right along. Another tip is around running battery systems at all for backup power. When you run your gas generator, it doesn't really matter how much power you're using. It's going to run generally at the same speed unless you have an inverter generator. So for the most part, you could just run every appliance you want, but you're going to burn up gasoline quickly. Your average 4,000 watt gasoline generator uses about 15 gallons per day running at full load. That's a lot of gas to have on hand. But the benefit of batteries are if you go around and start switching lights off, the batteries will only use up the exact amount of power that is needed. But now what do you do when that charge runs out? You've got to recharge this thing, right? It's not using gasoline. Well, you have a couple of options. The first one is you can still use a gas generator. Now EcoFlow makes one that's fully automatic and you can plug it right into these. And it does sound really cool, but I've not been able to test that thing yet. So I don't want to tell you that it's a great thing to buy until I actually see it firsthand. My plan is I'll run my gas generator anytime these batteries get to about 20%. I'll plug the AC outlets on the gas generator right into the charging cords on the back of the Delta Pros. The goal in this video was to show you that you can power your entire house using a battery backup and it's actually fairly simple to use. It's not the perfect system for everybody. Many people will just want to use their gas generator and that's fine. Power backup is all about what you want and how prepared you want to be for a disaster. If you've got other ideas for how I can improve my system or want to tell me about what you're doing with yours, certainly leave me a comment below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up.